All right, so the grommet hole is quite a bit bigger now. We should be able to fit those connectors through. Start with the biggest one. All right, the biggest one is through. Now do the other three or four connectors. All right, so now all of the engine connectors are going through the grommet. So we're gonna just slide this grommet all the way back to right in here near the computer but since we're mounting the ECU underneath the rear seat of this bus um, the grommet's going to go right around here so we have some flexibility with mounting the computer. If this is in a van again, I like uh, Westphalia, I like to put the ECU underneath the uh, left rear cabinet, kind of that oddball space and uh, you'd put the you'd put the grommet closer to the computer right in here a few more inches but you know that's always flexible we can we can change that later so the harness is looking a little more manageable already we have the computer side through the grommet to the engine side and we'll distribute from these locations but now we have two distinct areas. Okay, so now we'll start forming things. So from the engine side grommet, we're going to have two distinct areas. We're going to have the engine connectors right here. These actually plug into the engine harness that sits right at the left forward side of the engine once it's in a VW. fuel pump and this is our starter wire that needs to be trimmed down so it's got a junction there that we're gonna clip and also the uh, vehicle speed sensor is gonna sit in this this side uh, spur of the uh, the main engine harness. now if you remember from the one of the previous videos the loose wire identification videos we identified the vehicle speed sensor and it's in this group so just unbundle that and take the long VSS cable and we're going to route it through the grommet and then snake it to this side spur that's going to go right above the transmission very near like the adapter plate area okay now we have the VSS signal wire off of the spur here. And what we're going to do is use the process sensor. There's the three leads. We're going to connect these three leads one to an ignition source, one to a ground, and one to the uh, actual VSS signal. And then I'm also going to um, disconnect one of these for the start. Uh, starter solenoid and just kind of clean it up take one of these out and then I'm gonna place a few bits of tape on this to make it a little more manageable now in the loose wire identification video um, we had two that came from the engine connectors we had oil pressure switch which is this guy and we have water temperature and water temperature we ran up to ECU and it's in this pile here but the oil pressure switch on the bus the VW bus uh... sorry for the wind here guys I'll try and explain what's going on here I took the oil pressure switch wire and uh, ran it to the left leg of the main harness to meet up with the um, ignition on wire and the reason why I'm doing that is because in the VW bus the oil pressure switch and the ignition wire uh, go together. They're in the same harness. So that's what I'm doing here. Once again, sorry for the wind. I'm just going to run those together. So now I'm going to start taping, taping up things just a little, just to get things a little more manageable. 
manageable. But we have the um, the VSS here. We have the fuel pump. We have the uh, starter cable and the ignition on, and as well as the oil pressure we just ran. So we are nearing the end of the uh, engine harness side, so let's start at the grommet, work our way out. We've got a solder joint here for the VSS. We've got a Y, so the main harness continues. We have another solder joint for the VSS and another. And then we get to the engine connectors. And then it spurs off, we have the igniter and the um, MAF and the pressure sensors. Come back to the main harness here at the grommet and on the left Y, we have the things going to above the transmission. So things going to the starter, um, this VSS will swing down from the top, uh, fuel pump, and uh, things like that, the ignition and oil. So now, let's take a look at what we're going to do from the on the um, under seat area where the um, computer is going to be housed. So basically, we're just going to form it all in one harness and then break it out from the computer here. Okay, so from the grommets, um, started taping things up a little bit, getting things a little organized. We have the select monitor and the uh, test mode connectors. We've got two um, soldering joints that need to happen. And I brought the computer out just to kind of hold the wires in place. And what we're gonna do is kind of put the, um, we have a little bit of length on the relays here and I'm just gonna start tucking this stuff in and then um, I'm going to leave the OBD2 sensor pretty long so it can be mounted in a real convenient place and we're getting close to being able to test here so I'm just gonna continue wrapping and then we're going to solder and then, uh, and then we'll take a look at doing a quick little test the computer side is pretty well shaped now. We have our relays with our diagnostic select monitor and test mode connector. We have our battery connection. This is going to go to a 12 volt. This is going to go through a, um, a fuse. So whether it's an inline fuse or a fuse panel, um, that's up to the to the owner of the harness and to install that. And then we have the fan one relay trigger and I'm also going to route that up to this relay location and mount a relay in there so that that can operate the fans on this bus. On a van again you don't need this but you can if you'd like but I'm just going to route that up there so at least he has the ground if he chooses to go this direction. Then we have the loose wires right there that we identified in the loose wire ID video and the OBD2 connector. So now what I'm going to do is take any of these splices, these little flags that we have, and trim the wire back and get them ready to solder. So we have a handful of them in the harness here. I thought I'd show you the fan control real quick here. Uh, just a standard Subaru relay and it has a, a lead that's going to go to the battery fuse panel and that, that'll take a 30 amp fuse uh, and then we've got the actual uh, wire that will power the fan it's this black red very similar to like the fuel pump wire color. And then we've got the two trigger wires. One is ground, which the ECU supplies, which is this guy. And this one right here, this red. And then this green right here, these are just wire colors that came off of this relay. This green actually comes down to where I'm working on the 
tying everything into an ignition source. So remember this, this ignition wire uh, goes to the engine bay right here. It connects into the keyed switch from the VW, from the bus that is. So these I'm actually going to crimp together and I like to use these crimps and get them at Napa. They're just butt splice crimps. I don't like using the uh, plastic crimp connections. I like using these and then um, and then heat shrink. So that's what I'm going to do on this guy. I just thought I'd show you that um, radiator fan relay setup. So all of the soldering connections are about ready to solder. I'm just going to solder these up and uh, I like to solder the smaller wires and crimp the bigger wires. So when I said I was using crimps, that was for a, a larger gauge wire. These wires right here are pretty, pretty small, small gauge. So there are a handful, maybe eight or so wires. So I'm just going to get these all spliced and then I'll tell you what they are. All right, so we um, did the OBD2 um, ignition on source. Did a couple in here for the fan relay and the ignition relay ground. Did the ignition source. And we just keep coming here. Did two over here for the VSS. Here for the VSS, and so now we're ready to put some 12 volts to this harness and see if we can get some uh, test lights to operate.